अराउंड एट थर्टी हाँ नहीं मैं निकल दूँगा Good morning. Good evening. Hey Tom, good to see you. Good to see you as well. Hey Ricardo, uh, I need to drop in a few minutes. I have a conflicting meeting, but uh, I just wanted to come in and say thank you for the for the work that you and your team did on uh, evaluating Harbor. I much appreciate it. Hey, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so then it will be up to the TOC now, um, you know, to put it up for a vote for graduation. That, that, that is correct. Thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. Uh, is it going to go to six storage now, or, or is it? Or... Uh, six, six storage completed the review. Uh, Sad did it. Uh, he added the comments on their PR, but he got busy and has not merged the PR yet. So we're waiting for that merge. Okay. Okay. Cool. But they did complete the review. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I'll stay on for a few minutes and then I'll jump off. Thank you. Cool. No problem. So. Uh... Yeah, welcome everyone. So we have a, um, you know, presentation today. I think that's the main item uh, uh, for Kita. So did I pronounce that right, Kita or Keta or Kita? How do you pronounce? Yeah, either that? either works. Uh, we generally go Keta, but uh, there's Kida, okay. there's no official pronunciation guide. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's Jeff. Uh, yeah, and he's going to talk about that. And so yeah, take it away. Perfect, great, uh, and I assume I'm fine to share my screen out. Yeah. I'll go ahead and do that so that I can show some of the, the slides. And it's good to see we've got Honored from Microsoft here, Tom from Codeit, Zibionic from Red Hat. I'm even probably missing a few other folks. So thanks, thanks all for joining uh, to help okay. answer questions as well. So oh, as I was evaluating why, why why video things mirror my screen. Uh, but it looks like you don't see a mirrored version, only I do. This was my exploration this morning. All right, so we'll start with uh, uh, Kata, uh, event-driven autoscaler. This is something that we are making, a, we've had a proposal open for the sandbox. Uh, so I just wanted to share a little bit about what it is and then answer any questions that you might have that, that can help uh, in, in doing this. Previously, I think as mentioned, we've. We've made a similar presentation to the serverless work group uh, to a few folks there across SAP, VMware, whatever else, and that went well. Um, but this was before the new the new kind of policy happened with the SIG. So some of this might be repeated if you were at, at that presentation a few months ago. Uh, so some background and history here. Uh, Kata 
was initially started by Microsoft and Red Hat primarily. For some background, so I'm Jeff, I'm a product manager at Microsoft Azure. And when I'm not focusing on open source and Kubernetes stuff like Kata, I'm helping manage and run the Azure Functions service. So Azure Functions is Microsoft serverless offering like into AWS Lambda or, or a GCP function. And one thing that we had observed as a team is that we had developed some technology to help run functions and scale them effectively, but we had customers and users who are interested in using this type of functionality outside of Azure. And, and so we kind of looked at the Kubernetes ecosystem in general. We're like, you know what, there there's might be a gap here in terms of what's possible today and what we think, think is there. So we, we talked to a few folks and, and let me know too, if other people only see a black screen. Thanks Tom for yeah, we, we Yeah, we see a uh, black screen right now. So. Black screen, okay. Let me unshare, thanks for flagging. And see if resharing um, makes it happier again. Let me try one more time. I'm not getting any pop-ups from Mac telling yes. me that it's unhappy. No, Is it I still black? It. No, I can see it now. Okay, great. Thanks for flagging Tom. Yeah, we can see it. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, we, we reached out to a few folks, Red Hat and some of the folks on the call from Red Hat were like, yeah, this, this sounds interesting to do this event-driven scale way. So Kata at its core is a component that can be installed in any Kubernetes cluster that will enable your cluster to scale pods and deployments and jobs even, uh, not just based on CPU and memory, but based on metrics that are being pulled from the event source. So specifically in Azure functions, we don't just scale based on the CPU of your functions, but we're actually proactively looking at the queue or the SQL database or whatever else it might be and helping really rapidly scale your, your functions as a result. And so Kata is doing something very similar in a hopefully very seamless way. So we wanted to make it very simple to wire up metrics from event sources and plug those into things like the horizontal pod autoscaler. We wanted the ability to scale down to zero in the same way that Azure Functions users were akin to scaling to zero and saving resources. Uh, we released this last uh, April around this time. It went GA 1.0 at KubeCon in 2019. And we currently have about 20 scalers to different sources like Kafka, PostgreSQL, Nats, Prometheus, a bunch of sources out of Azure, AWS, and GCP. So even before I, I do anything else, I did want to show a quick demo just so that you can see what this looks like this takes about 15 seconds so i have a kubernetes cluster that's already running and i have one container or one deployment that's in it and it's a rabbitmq consumer so this deployment i've said hey it's consuming rabbitmq messages and the one thing to note because kata is installed and doing all of its stuff this is actually scaled all the way to zero because Kata has let Kubernetes know there's actually not any queue messages here to consume anyway. So you don't even need to consume the resources or reserve the resources to run this thing because there's nothing to be done. Uh, and I can show you uh, if I just look at the Kata namespace, you can just see it just, there's a Kata operator and then a metrics API server that's running and monitoring this stuff. Now, if I go ahead and I watch the pods, this is my RabbitMQ server. And now I'm going to deploy a job, uh, which is going to publish a thousand messages to the queue. So not just drop one message in, it's actually going to drop a thousand messages in. So we should see that job spin up and it's creating and dropping a thousand messages in the queue. And what happens as a result then is now Kata has seen, oh, there is work to be done. So now we have one consumer that's come online uh, right away. But what's nice is that even before that sentence is finished, you can see because it wasn't just one message that I actually dropped in thousands of messages into that queue, that very rapidly Kata has actually driven this to say, hey, I actually need to scale this RabbitMQ function uh, a lot to make sure that I drain this really rapidly. So this kind of very proactive, very event-driven scale is what Kata is making possible. And if I waited here for 30, 45 seconds, it would finish scaling up, consuming all the queue messages and then scale all the way back down to zero again. Uh, so that's, that's kind of what Kata is doing behind the scenes. Uh, what's making it work is one of our core fundamental uh, value that we wanted to do when we built this, um, that we set from the get-go and we've continued to stand by with our community is we didn't wanna rebuild anything that Kubernetes already did. 
And so behind the scenes, how it works, I showed you there's that Kata operator that's running. It also has its metric server, which connects to the, the Kubernetes metrics APIs. And then there's a number of what are called scalers. Those are all the different event sources. I mentioned like there's a RabbitMQ one, a Kafka one, a Postgres one, a Prometheus one, whatever, about 20 of them. And you end up having your event source. In the case of my demo, it's RabbitMQ. I think in the rest of the slides, it's gonna assume that it's Kafka. And so then you just deploy, you create a deployment like you normally would. So I just deployed using a Kubernetes deployment. And then there's a special CRD that Kata exposes called the scaled object. And this is really the metadata of where you map your deployment, where you map your job to the event source that you care about. So in this case, I'm saying, hey, it's my deployment that I care about, and I want you to scale based on Kafka. So here I provide a little bit of metadata for Kata to use. I can configure things like how frequently should Kata check to see if there's messages to be processed. I can also configure things like minimums and maximums. Maybe I never want to scale all the way down to zero. Uh, here I define like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in Kafka. Here's how to connect to Kafka. I can set whatever info I need to there based on the event source. And even some values here, like in this case with Kafka, there's something called the lag threshold, which is more or less setting the target for scale. So in this case, 50 is saying for every 50 unprocessed messages in Kafka, I want to target about one replica. And so if there were a thousand messages, it's going to try to do, what is that, 50 replicas? Um, but if there's only 50 messages, it's only going to target about one. So if I make this number lower, Kata is going to scale faster and more aggressively. If I make it higher, it's going to scale more conservatively. Uh, so you have a bunch of knobs there to help control this. Sorry. Uh, so you go ahead and apply that to your cluster. Kata picks up that scaled object. The Kata operator knows about the scaled object, and you can see in in the case of my slide, I've even graded out because it's like, hey, I can scale this thing to zero now because I know the Kafka event source is empty. Kata's just doing this by wiring everything up automatically for you to the HPA. So it's not <coughs> using its own auto scaler. It's just augmenting the existing Kubernetes ways to do this. If a message pops in, oh yeah, during this whole process, it, now it's just up to Kata to constantly be asking how many events are being generated. So it asks Kafka at every polling interval and says, hey, are there unprocessed messages? And if the answer is no, then it keeps this thing scaled down. If the answer ends up being yes, then just like I showed you, you watch it pop up and then potentially scale out very rapidly. Um, so a few key features kind of based on the demo and the architecture, you can scale any deployment or job based on event metrics by defining that additional CRD. And we're just using Kubernetes CRDs to drive the experience. It lets you scale to and from zero based on events uh, back and forth. It has 20 event source scalers built in. It's completely extensible. Uh, this is the largest area of contribution and interest that we've seen are people adding these additional event sources. Um, uh, I mentioned kind of in passing, you can also say, hey, maybe I have a long running job. Maybe every queue message isn't just a simple order I need to process. Maybe it's a video I need to transcode. And so you can actually use a scaled object mode where you say create a Kubernetes job for every event that comes in, which is a very useful model. Uh, there's ways to define authentication. So we have ways to integrate with secrets, uh, with other sources as well. Um, you can use pod identity if you're connecting to a cloud, cloud provider. So for instance, if you're using like the Azure queue scaler, uh, Kata integrates with Azure pod identity. And so you don't even have to pass in a password. It's just going to use its own identity to authenticate. There's support for that in AWS as well. Uh, and really, this is about letting you focus on your app and not have to worry about the scaling internals, manually wiring up the custom metrics, doing uh, the work to do this manually. Kata just makes it as easy as defining that scaled object. So in terms of community, uh, we've been really happy and, and pleased with the amount of uh, energy that's happened around Kata in its time. So we've got uh, about 2,000 stars on GitHub, a number of contributors. Uh, this is across large corporations as well. Microsoft, Red Hat, IBM, Codet, Boop, Astronomer, IO. This is just the few that I pulled off the top of my kind of stand-up sheets. There's, there's much more. We have weekly stand-up. So from the get-go, Kata has, there's nothing in Kata that's branded Microsoft or branded Red Hat. This is something that we've wanted to be community driven. So we have weekly stand-ups on Zoom. We actually have one coming up in about three hours. Uh, there's a website that has a list of all the scalers and a few users who are using it um, across uh, their solutions to help add some more stuff. 
uh, this was nice. I just noticed when I was preparing the presentation, there was even some folks who were just tweeting like, oh, hey, Kata, this actually looks super interesting. This looks like what we're looking for. And then Richard chimed in and was like, yeah, we've actually been using this in production for a while now. So it's very simple. Like we didn't want to make this a full complex uh, doing 80 things. It's really just driving that event driven scale, but it does that very well. Um, so the last slide I have is in terms of like, why are we interested in the CNCF? Uh, I mentioned already with CADA, our intent wasn't to in reinvent the wheel, but it's really building on those standards and building on those technologies that are being developed in the CNCF like Kubernetes. So it makes it a natural home. Our intent has always been to do this open and community driven. While it started with Microsoft and Red Hat in a partnership, we really wanna make this vendor neutral in every way possible. We feel like donating it to a foundation with CNCF is a way to show that good faith with the community. It's already MIT licensed. We're, we're planning if this becomes sandbox to use things like the CNCF um, CL, CLA uh, contributor license. Um, all those things, there's, it, there's no kind of, we still wanna hold on to this, that, or the other. This is really our intent to say, we feel this is a useful piece of tech. We've been using tech like this to run the Azure function service. Uh, this has been in the open now for a while and we just want to go all vendor neutral now. Kata also integrates very seamlessly with a number of other CNCF projects, things like the virtual kubelet to scale out into virtual nodes, NAT scalers, Prometheus scalers, StreamZ scalers, uh, Helm is the way we use to deploy it. Uh, and we're really looking for that vendor neutral home for a key serverless capability. Specifically in the serverless space, I think serverless has this connotation of being very vendor locked in and there's been some heated discussion about CNCF and serverless in general. We're really hoping that CADA can be one of those very nice pieces of serverless in addition to things like cloud events um, that would tie in very neatly with the CNCF. So that's all I really wanted to share. I'll stop sharing here. I saw, um, yeah, a few comments. I don't, uh, I think most of that is handled. So I think I'll just pause here. If there's any questions or anything that you could use from us, I'm more than happy to, to share more. Yeah, I have questions on the uh, scalers. So is that a single process or, you, or is it multiple processes running in, in Kubernetes? So. Yeah, so today we have, there, it can run in both modes. Today, the majority of our scalers are just running in that single process. They come out of the box. Uh, they're fairly light rate, like each scaler is about 30 lines of Go code. We have a way to make them all external. And this is actually something that we've had discussions about even as recently as last week's standup, which is like there's a world that you deploy CADA and that you kind of like check all the boxes for all the scalers that you want. And now instead of getting just those two pods, now you have 15 of them and each one's doing its own scaling thing, but we didn't want to make it too over overloaded so far. So right now the majority of them run in the shared process. We do have ways for you to plug in external ones. There's a few that only run externally uh, and this is something that we're still kind of evaluating with to make sure that we don't get the footprint too large or we need to start to version these more independently. So we have the capability there. There's some scalers that take advantage of it, but mostly for convenience, we ship most of them just in the same process today. Got it. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? So I'm just, because I mean, if you end up having multiple processes for each scaler, then you're using more resources, but um, but like you said, they're lightweight, right? So, so maybe, yeah, if you added more processes there, then it wouldn't affect too much of the, yeah, of the workload in a, in a Kubernetes cluster. Yep, great. And I see one question in chat from Jay real quick. Um, integration with cluster autoscaler, not just the HPA. Um, so there's nothing directly we do with cluster autoscaler. As far as I understand though, and I invite others to chime in, how the cluster autoscaler will work is it will look at what the HPA is scheduling and the resources that it's trying to schedule. And then based on that, uh, it can scale the cluster. So I believe indirectly, Kata would cause your cluster to scale uh, because Kata is gonna be telling the HPA, you need to add more resources. The HPA is gonna be scheduling those. And then at one point, the scheduler is gonna be like, I don't have the space to, to put all these things that Kata is telling me to schedule. And that would kick in the cluster autoscaler which would then scale my entire cluster. So I believe they work directly. This is a common question though. So I, I am pausing a little bit in case Sibionek or others want to yeah, clarify. I mean, if I got the, something only, the, the reason I, I brought this up is because um, cluster autoscaler only has the one um, catalyst for scale up, right? Which is that pending pods are, are queued up. Um, 
And that obviously will talk to the underlying cloud provider in Cluster Autoscaler and ask the autoscaling group or node, node group or whatever to expand. Um, one thing that we hear a lot in Cluster Autoscaler is um, support for uh, more predictive um, or scheduled based um, uh, scale up uh, ev events. So um, I was thinking, you know, maybe uh, since Kata seems quite uh, flexible in that regard and in, in its uh, um, wide choice of sort of the events that can trigger an action, um, I was thinking maybe it would be possible to, to integrate Kata with Cluster Autoscaler and use the Kata event sources as the triggers for Cluster Autoscaler instead of just the pending pods queue. But I don't know, it's just a thought. It, makes a lot, it honestly makes a ton of sense. I'm even just briefly looking at the Cluster Autoscaler stuff and it does look that there are some metrics that maybe these are metrics that it exposes. But yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense. And even to your point of scheduling, one of the work streams that we've been funneling some resources into recently is kind of along the, like I mentioned, it's predictive in the case, or it's less reactive because it can actually see that, hey, there's a thousand messages in the queue, let's do something. And it makes sense right. that you, maybe you set some threshold where it's like, look, if there's 10,000 things in the queue, yeah, go start scheduling stuff, but also go go scale there at the cluster thing. Uh, right, or if you know, can... yeah, if you know you're doing, uh, you know, 100,000 batch jobs starting at noon, you know, like you could yes. just predictively go and, and uh, increase the number of worker nodes, you know. Yeah, um, that's the that's the one that like Microsoft Research right now is partnered. They're they're helping tweak some algorithms where their hope is that, in addition to that, like if if it is every Friday at five o'clock, there's a thousand things that drop in the queue, or I'm running some batch. Kata ideally would be smart enough at Friday at four fifty five to be like, look, the queue's still empty, but I've seen this too many times to know the the storm's coming. Right. And right, so right. now let's go and crank up the cluster autoscaler, crank up the HPA in, in advance. So I, I think that makes a ton of sense. I'd be interested to know what integrations exist today to do the cluster autoscaling stuff, but there's nothing, yeah. there's nothing fundamental to how Kata works that would prevent any of that. So I think that's all within the line of thinking of how we've been approaching Kata as well. Great conversation. You, you mentioned um, predictive scaling of the cluster, for example. Would, would you be interested in having a history of all the scaling that we've triggered? or do you just want to have a, a source to scale on at this point in time? Are you asking me or Jeff? Yes, no, you, sorry. Me? <laughs> uh, so uh, generally I'm, I'm referring to um, being able to change the trigger for scale up from the single thing that currently is supported by Cluster Autoscaler, which is that there are pending pods in uh, to be scheduled. Um, okay. There are alternate events for cluster autoscaler scaling down. Uh, so you can do like custom metrics and stuff like that um, to, to, to trigger a scale down event. Um, but for scaling up, meaning, you know, increasing the number of worker nodes in the autoscaling group, there's only one event uh, trigger as far as I know. So that's, that's what I was referring to. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, th I think you, you need both, right? So uh, so one of the problems when you auto scale is uh, you end up thrashing or you may end up, uh, um, you know, with more resources than you actually want. Uh, and then, but, but uh, also you, when you, before you scale down, you want, you want to know if there's something maybe or coming up or, or some event coming up in the next maybe 10 minutes. So you want to keep your cluster up and running because Let's say if it's 10 minutes, uh, your event comes in and you've already scaled down, but now you're scaling back up, right? So you end up kind of thrashing in a way, right? So scaling up and down and, and depending on these events. So if you have a way to predict some of the, the workloads that are coming in a little bit later, you might be able to smooth that out. Right? So I think that's one of the concerns. Yeah, so, so how I see data for now is that it's purely focused on application autoscaling, where we then rely on the cluster autoscaling to make sure that there is enough capacity. But maybe we should indeed also have a look if we can help on the, the cluster side of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we don't really have a plan at the moment. And I see there's a nice question for you, Jeff, on Knative. 
Thank you. I was busy creating a GitHub discussion issue around this conversation. Uh, okay, uh, any relationship with Knative? So a few things here uh, uh, that's, that's worth noting. In, in general, I think the short answer is Knative is a entire, the, the idea of it is to be an entire serverless platform. So it comes with, it does about 20 things out of the box. Kata is just a very single purpose thing that's like, I'm just going to be doing event-based scaling based on this kind of pattern that I talked about. So Kata is a much smaller scope, just a single use component. Now that said, it actually ties in well with the Knative story. So one of the work streams that's kicked up as a result of the last KubeCon and going 1.0, so we actually have an active work stream with the Knative group where we're looking at ways that they can leverage Kata within Knative to add some additional functionality. For example, in Knative, there's a way to get event notifications when there's a Kafka message. There's a pull request right now in the Knative repo that says, hey, if we actually took a dependency on Kata, we could scale that thing down to zero when Kafka is empty. Um, so there's some interesting stuff there and just this polling pattern in general and integrating it more tightly with Knative, but directly they're, they're not really overlapping too much because Kata is this very single use thing and Knative is trying to do a bunch of other stuff, but it is one important piece to a serverless platform that we feel. Um, and there's additional things that Knative is trying to accomplish in addition to that, if that, if that helps. And thank you, Jay, for uh, flagging the AWS team. I, I might ping you afterwards. Uh, there's, there's someone on our side too, who's interested in some of the deeper Kubernetes integrations. Uh, so I'm gonna see what we can do with this cluster one. So hopefully Klaus, that, that answers on the Knative stuff too. Let me know if there's any other questions there. So if you have Knative and Kata running on the same cluster, they can you auto scale functions in the cluster or not? Or this is not supported yet, I guess. So there's two, there's two kind of ways of, of doing scaling. I guess I'm trying to think of the, Knative today does auto scaling. Uh, it has its own custom auto scaler. It can also integrate with the HPA. Um, and how Knative generally works is that everything that it's scaling is an HTTP request. So it's either gonna be a cloud event over HTTP or an HTTP or gRPC request from an application or from a client or from wherever else. So Knative primarily optimizes scaling on today by looking at things like concurrency of HTTP requests and then driving scale that way. Um, there's this thing behind the scenes as well that's taking Kafka events and turning them into cloud events over HTTP or gRPC that Kata might scale. So Kata approaches things slightly differently in that Kata does not look at HTTP requests. Kata is actually looking at the end event source. Uh, so Kata will look at Kafka or RabbitMQ or Prometheus or whatever else and drive scaling that way. So you can auto scale today. I think the reason that there's interest from both sides, both Knative and Kata, in understanding how we can bring things together is that the differences and the trade-offs between both of those models of scaling only on HTTP and scaling based on the event source have some differences. Both are valuable. Um, so the, the kind of long answer to your question is, you can do auto scaling in Knative today, but there are ways that you cannot auto scale in Knative today that Kata can enable, and the Knative team is interested in lining that up. And there are a lot of K's in that sentence. <laughs> it's almost a tongue twister. Um, it, actually, I, I could also speak to that one a little bit. Um, so I, I was original. So I, I work on Apache Airflow, and originally we were looking to use Knative as our as an auto scaling system. And what we found was that for long running tasks, um, Knative is kind of not an optimal solution because you have to keep an HTTP request uh, open the entire time that a task is running. Um, so we were able to find that Kata was a lot better suited for a more asynchronous or worker-based uh, auto scaling system. Thank you, Daniel. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's an example too of like the when when everything's HTTP based versus the event source based. That's one of those trade offs. Is like long running becomes a lot harder when you're trying to hold open an HTTP request for twenty minutes or whatever. You might need it. Or hours. So, or hours. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Uh, that's great. So if uh, if uh, if one user has such kind of uh, scenario, so for example. Uh, uh, they would like to scale out their deployment based on some event. So they, they may didn't know the details of their for Kida or Knative. You know, the overall, 
you know, the overall feature is similar. Uh, I, I know there may be some technical detail may be different uh, to resolve problem. So what's, what's, what's your suggestion to this user? Which cases uh, he should use uh, Kine, uh, Kida or which cases he should use a Kinetive? You know, he yeah. may not know the detail of, you know, detail of some technology, more, for the more HTTP connection, something like that. Yep, yep. And if I, if I understand correctly, just to kind of repeat the question, it's with Knative, since you're connecting directly to the event source, the developer has to have knowledge of that event source. Um, and so what do you do in the case where you don't want to have that direct knowledge of the event source? Um, I think there's a few different answers to this one as well. I think my initial thinking too is cloud events, I feel like is a very good way that this has been solved even in the CNCF of being able to say, hey, at the end of the day, we're just gonna have events that you can subscribe to and scale from. Um, that Kata could help scaling that indirectly through some of the things like uh, metrics of the amount of cloud events that are being generated. Um, but in some ways, I'd almost say, uh, there's, there's a few ways this could be solved. So, so Knative definitely can do that part. Like Knative mm -hmm. eventing specifically is all about letting you subscribe without having any end knowledge of the event source. Uh, there's a way that the Azure function service, like that we built our serverless service, where we abstract that within the SDK that you actually deploy. So there's something called the Azure functions runtime that abstracts a lot of the details of the underlying event source and enables you to just write code. But it's the container itself that's doing the abstraction. It's not some cloud event behind the scenes. And then the final answer is just cloud events in general. So I think there's kind of three ways that you can cut it. Different SDKs like the Azure functions runtime, Knative and Knative eventing, or at the end of the day, just using cloud events. So it's it's a trade off because it, it's one of those things too. This is this is one of the interesting discussions in the service community in general, which is there's a push for how much do you abstract away the underlying event source from the developer. And the benefit of it is the developer doesn't have to worry about the underlying event source. But the downside of it is the developer can't take advantage of something that's not a common denominator across multiple event sources. So I think both are important. Sometimes I want to know it's a Kafka stream that I'm connected to because I need to checkpoint and I need to do in order processing and I need to do things that are Kafka specific. Other times, I just know that there's a notification that happens to be coming from Kafka, but I just need to post something to Slack. Cloud events works great there. So there's room for both, which is why I think there's room for both the Kata style and the cloud event Knative style. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a one size fits all. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Do you, do you have an integration also with uh, some of the big data frameworks like Spark and Flink? Or has there been any discussions about that? Or? Uh, I think, I know one of the, uh, someone doing big data stuff today is using Kata, but they're using it before the, the, like the Spark layer and they're scaling based on I believe in their case, like Kafka is the theme that is filling up all of the data. And then they're using Splunk to process those events that originated from Kafka, but then are going through a different pipeline. So they're using Kata to grab it from the Kafka side and not from Splunk directly. Um, so there's nothing direct, there's no scaler today directly that grabs any of those from something like a big data processing pipeline, but the event source that's probably funneling the data to that big data processing pipeline whether it's Kafka or something else, then that that is a supported scaler, if that helps. Uh, and I just wanted to add that we have added uh, integrations with two databases, uh, MySQL and Postgres. Uh, uh, so if you're, uh, but 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 yeah, we don't. As Jeff said, we haven't uh, uh, yet added uh, integrations with Spark and Flink. But but uh, but but with with other the event sources that may be funneling data into those. Cool. Any other questions? Silence. 
how where, how do we proceed uh, after this meeting? Do you guys have to vote, or how does that work? I think you need a consensus of two people from the SIG. Yeah, so um, if you can create a PR with uh, recommendations, I mean, for I mean, based on what I see, for me, it's a go for Sandbox. So uh, I don't really have any major concerns, but there, there's a template that we follow, right? So um, I can show you what the template is. I, I think there's another PR that that uh, we did for Volcano. And then so basically we need to fill in all the, the details and, and we'll go from there. And then and, and after that, we'll, we'll take it up to the, um, we'll, we'll recommend the, the project and this, the TOC will um, take a vote to, to put it in sandbox and, and, and it needs a two third vote. And after that, it will be in sandbox. Okay, so um, I thought the issue was the new approach, but basically I just take what is in the issue, open a PR, um, and we'll take it from there then. Yeah, yeah. And let me know if you, if you have any questions I mean, uh, about the template or anything or uh, about any item that, that's in the template. So it's, it's, it's a new process. I mean, we're just starting to use it. So mm -hmm. uh, we're just kind of like uh, trying it out. And if there's any, if you have any suggestions or anything that it might not work out or, or you or you have any concerns just you know let me know yeah if you could maybe go to the issue and post the latest uh, template that i'm certainly using the correct one and then i can uh, create the the, the pr uh, tomorrow uh, yeah and i um, i pasted the pr for volcano because i know that's the one you reviewed two weeks ago do you want us <clears> to open this pull request or is this something that that uh the leads of sig runtime need to fill out this template um, and then we open the PR and then you folks can add comments and then close it. Because I yeah, see I the ones they did in terms of, it's, it's more or less kind of our PowerPoint presentation and markdown, which is great. Like we, we've got the info, but I don't know if, if, if we need to put this together. Yeah, you can open the PR and then people can chime in um, with comments or anything that they, any questions that they may have. And, and then the PR gets approved and basically, yeah, and then we send it over after it gets approved and merged, then we send it over to the TOC. Okay, okay so great. it's a PR to, to the SIG runtime repo, not the TOC. Right, right, right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I'll bring this up today in our standup and then Tom and I can probably have this open by the end of the day today and it would be, I don't know how long the TOC and stuff works, but I know uh, anecdotally, we've been hoping that this is something we can make some noise about, uh, assuming all goes well okay. and we get sign off at KubeCon. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I know that's a month away now, and I don't know how quickly the wheels turn in this new process. Yeah. So, yeah, ho hopefully they can put it up for a vote before KubeCon. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what the, I mean, sometimes, uh, so the TOC just got new, uh, three new members, so you might actually need more votes now. So, <laughs> so but, uh, uh, oh, no, wait, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm talking about graduation. My, my bad, my bad, my bad. So for for sandbox, you you need three sponsors. That's what I remember. So so there won't be a vote, right? So uh, so you need to find. So after we do the recommendation and we fill in the PR, then you find three sponsors in the TOC, and then they'll they'll basically say, okay, we're we want this uh, project to be uh, in sandbox, and and, and and they take it from there, and then they put it in sandbox. Um, I don't know if it, it really needs a vote. I know that graduation needs a vote, right? But because we're just we, we're doing Harbor right now for graduation, but uh, okay. yeah. Do, so, do they do they have to be a, a TOC uh, representative or contributor? They have to be a, a TOC uh, member, right? So, uh, so I think we have we have two liaisons: Brendan Burns and Brian Grant. So. Uh, you could reach out to them and see if they want to sponsor the the project, right? So, um, and then and do you want us to uh, do you want us to reach out? Because I know one of the things, and I, I know that's a new process. Initially, they're like, hey, if you go through the SIG process, that way you don't have to just go and poke TOC members directly. Um, once this goes through, do you do you is it best if we do kind of go find three members of the TOC and we're like, hey, we presented for SIG runtime. Here's the PR that got closed. They gave us the recommendation. Would you be willing to sponsor, or is that something that 
you have names in mind that you'll flag and we can just kind of help answer questions. Uh, no, you guys can go. Actually, you get you guys can go and 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 ask uh, TFC members, right? For for sponsors, right? So it's it's uh, yeah. I mean, we can. Uh, I mean, as a SIG, uh, we can help out too. And in terms of finding some more people, if uh, you need uh, more sponsors, uh, based on our recommendation. Uh, but you you can also go and 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 contact uh, some of the TOC members and 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 you know. And they can look at the presentation, uh, this recording, and and based on that, you know, they make a decision, saying whether they want to sponsor the project or not. Right. So, does that right. make sense? Great. Yep, it does. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that will be the next step. So uh, and and yeah, just f uh, file the PR, and then so we can get that moving. Like, so we, hopefully, we can find a sponsor for uh, KubeCon. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, thank you guys. Uh, so I think uh, the other items in the agenda are um, Volcano that is uh, already merged. And so that's looking for TLC sponsors is what we're talking about. So <laughs> uh, if, you know, if you know anybody who would like to sponsor Volcano, I, I think uh, um, reach out to the TLC member and, and to help out. So we reached out to Brendan and Brian Grant, uh, who are our TOC liaisons, but we haven't gotten a reply yet. Um, and then, um, yeah, and there, and there's some new TOC members. I, I, I find that the, some of the new TOC members are a little bit more receptive to us because they, they're, you know, they just kind of want to learn more, and they might be able to uh, sponsor some of the newer projects. Uh, and then Harbor has already completed the review uh, from Sigrun time and. Um, so that will be set because it's a graduation. So that will be a TOC vote, right? So, uh, Michael, Michael will, um, uh, it needs a review from six storage and I don't know if it needs a review from six security, but the, after that, then it will be sent out for a TOC vote. So cool. Anybody has anything else that they want to talk about? Anything related to runtime, to KubeCon, to uh, community, anything? Hey, hey Ricardo. This, this is Tao from Kata, Kata community, and uh, you introduced Seek Runtime last week in the Kata AC last week. I, I, Sorry, I wasn't there, but uh, she told me that this is a very, very interesting work, working group and uh, I'm here to learn about it. And uh, we we might have something new to present, to present, to show for the, for the second, second runtime, asking for sample, sample thing, but uh, it's, it's not ready right now. I, we, so we, we just, just a heads up and, uh, and and learning the process and uh, see what, and prepare for myself when when it comes to to that. So great. I, yeah. I'm happy to to learn to watch the Kata Kata sandbox review and uh, it's very very helpful and the process is is helping. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, so if you if you want to present anything or any or you want to add any agenda topic, you know, feel free to add it to the doc. So we meet every two weeks, not not exactly uh, the first and the third um, Thursday of the month, right? So uh, yeah, any item that you want to add, or, uh, feel free to uh, add it there, and and then we can discuss in in the meetings. It could be a presentation or uh, any concerns, uh, any, any concerns about projects? Uh, I know, I mean, we, we're just getting started. This is, uh, you know, it's been around for maybe a month and a half. Uh, uh, Six Security, for example, has a lot of other stuff. You know, for, for example, they have uh, uh, security security reviews for projects. Uh, uh, but then that, I mean, that's outside the scope of this uh, uh, group, but uh, anything maybe related to runtime, uh, uh, review or, or you know uh, maybe AI type of workloads uh, uh, 
high performance type of workloads that you know it's it's within the scope of the group. Oh, okay, thank you. So, and is there any documentation on how they process the entire process for entering sandbox stage for a project? Yeah, that's that's um, documented all on the CNCF TOC GitHub page. So okay, thank you. GitHub T uh, CNCF uh, slash TOC. So there's plenty of documentation there on how the the sandbox uh, incubation and graduation process works, and then you know how you take it up to the six now. So it used to be before that it will the the projects will go to, directly to the TOC. But the reason they're creating this six is because there there's a lot more projects, so they're trying to uh, scale and, into different areas. So obviously they have runtime, now they have observability, they have um, security, uh, app delivery, and storage. So and and I think there's another group uh, in the works uh, called uh, contributor experience, uh, and that, that that will deal more about how I mean helping our contributors in the community. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. So, in, in anything else? No. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll open up the R when we're ready. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thank you.